It's Wednesday. Let's chat. Hi, I'm Kanan Chandran, the publisher of StormAsia.com and this is our regular series of uh, Wednesday web chats. Discussions on all sorts of topics and today's topic is something which is going to impact a larger group of people increasingly as we go through the upcoming years. Uh, it's about retirement or in our case it's the rise of the unretired that group of people who refuse to retire, who want to do more, who want to continue to leave a mark in this world or add value to whatever is going on in society. So this is our group of uh, very motivated and inspiring and inspired people and how they are going to handle something called retirement. In the past, retirement was all about looking to the day when you could stop, drop everything and chill and relax. And you kind of prepared for that. Well, the world has changed. I think retirement has become more of an option for many because can you afford to retire? There's so many exciting things going on. We are living longer. We're supposed to be healthier. We can add so much more to this society. Now, the other thing, of course, is it's an aging society. So there are more older people who are with a lot of experience who can add a lot more to it. And today's panel, it's a large panel. Uh, compared to previous discussions that we had. So I will just uh, introduce them very quickly and let them talk a bit about uh, who they are and where they've come from. Um, and then we will get into the discussion. So uh, in our panel today, we have uh, Suresh Manon, who is a retired Singapore Airlines pilot and now a pilot trainer. Zaina Brahim, who is a broadcaster of uh, long-standing, uh, who has turned a trainer and counselor and is now an author of two books. Never a Victim and Emotional Empowerment. Dr. Amir Singh, who is a consultant with Training Vision Institute, uh, who is starting the psychology and counselling department there and he's got a lot of experience in the education sector. Jasmine Adams, uh, a lawyer and a lecturer uh, who is now a tour guide. Uh, Mohamed Alami Musa, um, who is a head of studies in interreligious relations in plural societies program at the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies. Nanyang Technology University, oh, take extra breath for that one. <laughs> He's also the non-resident ambassador to the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria and he was the president of the Islamic Religious Council of Singapore from 2003 to 2021. Uh, welcome Alami to the session. Welcome everybody. So I will just uh, get the ball rolling with Suresh if you could just uh, tell us a bit about uh, your journey and, to, and where you are now. Okay, essentially uh... I started out about almost 46 years ago. Uh, I got a scholarship to do flying while I was in the university. So it was a one-track uh, profession for about 43 years till I retired. So I've flown most types of aircrafts that uh, Singapore Airlines had. And along that journey, I also, also got involved in uh, charity work. So after retirement, the company continued to employ me until COVID hit. And then aviation came to a standstill, but I still continued in my charity work, which I've been doing for about 27 years. And then now, just uh, in August this year, I was fortunate enough to be called back uh, into training again. So happy to be in my familiar environment. So that's in a nutshell. Okay. okay. All right. Great. Uh, thanks, Suresh. Um, let's uh, go to you, Zainab, a bit about yourself and your journey this thus far. Yes. Retirement. It was in 2005 when I had to retirement and it was a forced retirement. I was 35 years in broadcasting, but just four years before I leave broadcasting, I set up a private company, but my young staff somehow went to management, became whistleblowers and told them about it. And that was something management could tolerate because my 24-7 in the in the office is meant strictly for for the job. I was not supposed to set up a, a private company, but it was a learning point and a turning point in my life because the, 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 yeah. the girls, two girls who really made the report, they claimed that I was not fair to them. I was not good to them. And for that reason, they said, that they protested I was doing something else. 
actually my superior talked to them and my superior showed them the confidential report that I wrote of them. Nothing bad about them. In fact, they were, I, I have identified them as forces, good forces who could continue when I was to leave in, when I retired. Some of hatred uh, and uh, anger in them, saying that probably I was not seen as being fair to them, made them react that way. And when I left, it was so painful. And the pains drove me to find out what made people angry that way? What made people uh, took such a negative actions to hurt others? Not talking to the person. It would be good if they were to talk to me about why they felt that, that way. Mm -hmm. And I was giving my, my staff a lot of chance. And in fact, I made suggestions for them what to do in, in their career and all. But when, when that happened, that made me wonder about how does uh, emotion work? How does the mind work? Why people acted uh, that way? And so in the Camden Medical Center that I went to study more, I, in the end I became a psychotherapist as well as trainer counselor for South Foundation and uh, backed up by Citibank. I met a lot of people also having a lot of problems in their life, emotional problems, and many regretted for doing what they did when they were young, especially in divorce, because they became lonely and all. And the, the, the irony about emotions is that you may hate the person, your husband or someone whom you used to like, but you will miss him when you are separated from that person. Emotions that I learned in, uh, in uh, Medical Center, Camden Medical Center, was actually a gift from God. It is a signal for you to know something is right or wrong. And then you have to take a process, a way of understanding yourself. I mean, uh, could we get a bit I, about you? Yeah, I can. Well, I started my journey of work when I was very young. After national service, I always believed in working. Never, I didn't want to study. And that, from there, I was in fact uh, working for Benjamin Shears' brother, who had a security mm -hmm. agency. And from there, I went to do conservancy work. I was the only Indian in that field. And from then, in fact, I became a farmer. Would you believe it? I was a farmer for 23 years. I had a farm in Singapore, India. Don't, don't ask me how. I mean, it's a long, long story. So I was the secretary of the Singapore Flower Exporters Association for many years. And in 1997, 98, the recession came. And that's where I closed all the farms. And uh, due to my fact that I used to volunteer in counseling, I did psychology at that time. And today, I'm proud to say I'm an educator. I'm a lecturer, a senior lecturer, a professor. I've got two PhDs, one in psychology, oh. one in education. And uh, when I was told to retire <laughs> in April, I was told to retire because I'm getting old. And I just couldn't from MDIS. I was a counselor there, I was a senior lecturer, I was the chair of the exam board, etc., etc. And I looked out for opportunities, and in fact, it was a good thing. I have a lot of opportunities. I'm now even an adjunct at MDIS. I'm also a consultant at DVI, at Training Division, and things are going good. Okay, great. Excellent. Um, Jasmine? Oh, what yeah. about yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to practice law and I ran a design company. And then uh, when we decided to slow down the company, I took uh, my choice guide badge. Uh, so now I basically do writing, culinary writing. I edit cookbooks. Um, I run tours. I also curate tours for educators. <coughs> and um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's actually much busier than before when I have a standard job because okay. it depends on what comes up. Yeah, okay. It's a, yeah, anything could happen, right? Yeah. Opportunities are there. All right, uh, Alami, let's hear a bit about yeah. yourself. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I am 66 years old this year. I was trained as a civil engineer. I spent 33 and one third years in the public service and I retired at the end of 30, 33 and one third years. 
but I unretired myself the day after I retired. And I joined the NPO, the Rajaratnam School, started a program on inter-religious relations. But I have been socially engaged for the last 50 years in community development, in civil society, in uh, religious affairs, and in inter-religious relations. So right now, uh, I am a justice of peace. Um, I am a resource person to the MHA for Religious Harmony and uh, sits on the Independent Review Panel and also a member of the Disciplinary Committee <coughs> of the MAS, Monetary Authority of Singapore. And of course, uh, I spend my time also as Singapore's non-resident ambassador to Algeria. So that's how I, 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 am, I am. I'm retired. But still not retired. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a full load. That you have. <laughs> yeah. Probably a heavier load than when you were working <laughs> from the sounds of it. You know, the, the whole idea of uh, retirement when you first started working uh, and when you actually hit the point when you could or had to retire, what changes did you see in that time? I mean, your initial idea of retirement and the reality at the point of retirement. Um, Zaina, what was it like for you? Well, for me, having been trained in social science, I believe that change is the only constant in life. So even if I didn't retire officially that point of time, still I would be going through change. And in my lifetime, I was born immediately after the Second World War. And I went through so much of changes working with three prime ministers, and at the end of it all, they were great people, but still the, the, the uncertainties and the tabu emotional turbulence, the factor of trust <laughs> was missing, not just within my office, not just my staff looking at me th thinking that, oh, I am just following management. But uh, in a world outside of uh, the office itself, there was a lot of mistrust between people who were different in religions, in uh, races, you know, anything that could strike a, a, a cause for them to be concerned about became a yeah. problem. In my younger days, it was a lot of gangsters. Uh, my, my, my son, for instance, in school was bullied in, in school. He came back and shared his experience uh, to us. My husband was saying, go and fight. But me, coming from a, a, a for, from communication background, I spoke to the principal, I spoke to the teacher to share with her that such thing might, was reported to us uh, from my son. Please check if it was true. And it was true. There was a big uh, bullying uh, going on. One thing about emotion uh, that I studied, seven uh, major emotions are damaging to us. Each feeling or emotion does not work uh, singly, independently. They work as a gang. When you're angry, you get, you're full of hatred of others. Mm. Then the anxiety set in. And then you get, become stressed. You don't watch out. The end of the road will be mental health problem. So you need to understand yourself. Com effective communication to inquire is most important the way I see mm. it. So when I left my job, when left my job by force, the next thing I uh, told myself, I have to find out what happened and where do I move from there? Because time will keep on changing. You, you don't have to ask me, I will tell you all, everything about the change and you can find it in my book. Okay, okay, great. Uh, Amir, what was it like for you? When... I think the most difficult thing in life is change. Mm, you know, yeah. It's change. We do not want to get off from our chairs where we yes. are until yeah. we are forced to. You know, but when I was told to retire, I was in fact like one of our panel, my panel colleagues, I was forced to retire because the time had come. I had become 58 and they wanted me to leave, even though I'm at same company doing a junk now teaching. So I asked myself, what is it like? Why do I want? Why do why do I have to retire? I'm still fit. I'm running around. I exercise. I walk more than an hour and a half a day. Then I told myself, maybe it's money, cover bills, maybe it's money for leisure. I think, but the most important thing that I thought of was personal fulfillment. You know, even though I've done a lot of studies, I in fact 
intend to take up more studies, even at this age, maybe do a MBA or a doctorate in business administration. And there's one other thing which everybody will laugh at, but it's not a joke. It's a serious thing. I think it's to escape from the spouse. Now, don't <laughs> misunderstand. No, no, don't misunderstand. I know everybody thinks of it as a joke, but it is me time. You know, that's your me time. When you are out of the house, you are doing something. And I, that was why I felt I had to go back to work. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I think escaping the spouse, uh, yeah, many people Sorry do face that. that issue. No, no, no. It's, I mean, it's honest, right? I mean, at least yeah. being honest, that's great. Uh, Alami, mean, for, for you, the, the transition was uh, overnight, right? So was it a planned thing? or? Um, yeah, I think it was deliberate, it was planned. Um, yeah, so it was quite seamless, you know, from being retired to unretired. But let me uh, uh, add more to what to the discussion. I think the word retire is a bad word. Hmm. The word retire is a bad word. <laughs> it should be retired. I, I checked the meanings, you know, of the word retire. There are many meanings, no? but there's one meaning that struck me right to the core. And to retire means to prepare yourself to go to bed or prepare yourself to, to go to sleep. Sleep, you know. And in my tradition, uh, sleep means temporary death. I may sound gross, you know. I may sound weird, but retire is linked to sleep and sleep is meaning it means temporary death. That's why your soul and your spirit leaves your body during the hours of your sleep. And when you wake up, it comes back. So it means that retiring means that you are heading, you know, towards non-existence. You are going to disappear, you know. So this is something that we <coughs> think we do not want. We want to continue our human existence. Eh? So I think for me, uh, it is part of uh, it is ex existential in that sense, no? You exist, no? And if you retire, that means you you don't want to exist anymore. You want, I mean, to put it bluntly and blatantly, you want to die. I don't mm. think that's what we humans want. You have to continue, you know, to be alive, to live, you know, and to, to exist on this earth. Suresh, how about yourself? Well, I guess in, in some professions, <clears throat> retirement is inevitable. Okay, so like, in aviation, when I, when I started out, retirement was at 55. So I was prepared for retirement, but then at that time I was 23 years old, 55 years of age, look young, so we, you know, uh, didn't feature anywhere in my vision for the moment. As uh, I progressed along, it started to move to 57, 58, 60, 62, 65. So the goalposts kept on changing. Retirement was, net, was, you know, in many ways, not a cliffhanger. One day you start, next day you drop off, you know. So the goalposts kept on moving. One, one of the, uh, actually not so much one, but I think two, two material people in my life in aviation taught me what to expect in retirement and what not to expect, you know. One of them was a really miserable, pardon the language, son of a gun. You know, he made my life. I was I was a co-pilot at that time, you know, young junior co-pilot. And I, I, I remember, you know, he was abusive and he was, you know, like Zainab said earlier, what's the reason why some of these people are so miserable? It's because they didn't plan for the, yeah. as uh, Alami said, the afterlife. In the second individual that I saw, and I had the pleasure of doing his last flight with him. And here was a man who was looking forward to retirement with so much of fervor. He had this to do, that to do, this one. And I looked at him and I was comparing the two of them. The two flights were about four months apart. And it taught me a long time ago that you must always prepare for retirement. How do you prepare for retirement? That means when retirement comes, you must never think of looking back. You must look forward. The day you start looking backwards, you will feel miserable. 
because you think, oh, my life was like this. I was here. I was in Amsterdam. I was in Paris. I was in Los Angeles. I was in Toronto, and I used to eat this. And you cannot live that life anymore. You know, that is the past. You got to move into the future. So, along the way, I, I would say, a long time ago, I decided to get involved in charity work, develop hobbies, and also took up a lot of physical activity. So, even at the age of 69 now. I'm still cycling 62 kilometers at a time because I feel it is important to keep physically fit and like Alami says, don't wither away because our life expectancy has gone up. You can see during the uh, COVID period, a lot of people were feeling miserable, you know, but to me it was great because I had a lot of more time to exercise. I wasn't working, but I was still able to do charity work, although a lot of it was done online. I couldn't do my own professional work, which I missed a lot, but I kept reading. But reading is quite different. My, my first passion actually after flying is actually teaching, which I've been doing for 29 years, instructing pilots, you know, and I really missed that. So when I was given the opportunity to go back, oh, I just jumped on the bandwagon. And then this year, then two and a half years, of course, nothing. This year, August, they called me back again. I jumped and I'm going back with so much of fervor into it because First of all, this uh, concentration only on doing your main passion, teaching, you know. And so I've got no other secondary work. I don't have administrative duties. I have nothing. I can just purely. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful world, you know, in retirement. As long as there are financial compensations, to be honest. You don't get as much as what you do, but more than enough for your... Chakwetia, wantan me, and roti prata good enough for me. You know what I mean? And the small luxuries of life. Take your wife out once in a while, you know, when, when you're not running away from her, as Amir is saying. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So, you know, it, basically it's a balance. You have to scale down. And I was prepared for that scaling down. But my main point for people who are re reaching retirement are never, ever look back. You're going okay. to be a miserable son of a gun. Okay, no, that, that's a very uh, fair point. Uh... My late husband and I, we have a home in Devon. Uh, mm. And yes, it, it was supposed to be pure retirement. As in, we would go back, we'll live in Devon and, um, and welcome friends from Singapore. So yeah, okay. the whole idea was to not to work anymore. Yes, so it was on the cards for me. So, how did you take to the, the sudden change then, now that I, you have uh, to... So, um, when my husband passed away, then I felt that there was no way I could live alone in Devon. Uh, and if I were to continue to stay in Singapore, uh, then it... I mean, I was already guiding. I was already an active tourist guide. And um, so, it's not really been retirement, but because of COVID, of course, we don't have any tourists, and when we are, we didn't have any tourists. Um, I I had to find other things to do, and fortunately, uh, I started writing. So I wrote fiction and nonfiction, and yeah, I, I've been I've been lucky to get articles accepted, and um, yeah. So then I uh, then I've been approached. I I get approached for work related to food. Yeah, so okay. it, uh, it's it's still retired for me. It's it's really a fun retirement because um, I think the best, I think the most important thing about retirement for me is that we must do things that we really want to do or enjoy. Because I mean, for me, I I practiced law for about twenty over years. I ran the design company for twenty over years. It's it was very, very hard work, right? And so what, what happens then, um, we, can, we can go on working, we can, I can go back to practice, but to me, the most important thing we have to take note about retirement is what do we want to do? Mm -hmm. we, we should pursue what we like, even though there isn't that huge financial reward. Hmm. Okay, fair enough. No, the one thing, I mean, all of you are doing uh, different things. Uh, the thing with that, of course, is uh, your body is also aging and your 
energy levels may not be what it was before. How does that impact your ability to continue to do the things you want to do? Do you see a point in which you say, oh, all this is just too much, too much hard work for me. My system can't take it. Would you still push on or would you then call it quits? Uh, you know, the impact of your own body on your desire to work. Yeah, Amir? Yeah, I would like to bring this up. I think uh, when you get to our age, when we are supposedly to retire, we look for jobs where we are the masters of our own destiny. In other words, we can work as much as we want. The schedules are up to us. We are control of the schedule. And now, especially, they don't mind elderly working to take up remotely. We can work from home. So I think this helps us. Uh, if we are working in a, uh, uh, in a company from nine to five, I think that matters a lot. So here we have, we prefer part-time work. So no need to work from nine to five. We go in when we like. Like I gave you the example, I'm a consultant. I can, I have autonomy. As even Dan Ping said, autonomy, mastery, purpose. What's your purpose in life? What do you want to do? So we do that. You know, so that's what I'm trying to say. That it, we have our own time. I think that's very important to us. Yeah. Mm. Can, yeah, can, can I... Can I say something? I, for, for me, retirement is just a label of your age. And we are an organic being. As we grow, you are right. Our, our physical growth will affect our performance. But that doesn't mean we just live all the activities and just enjoy ourselves. Just like uh, Jasmine was saying in Devon, for instance, she found it such emptiness especially when her husband uh, passed away. Your purpose in life must be from the start when you were born until the end of your life itself. I think every 20 years, the first 20 years, you are just learning about the world, about life, family matters. But from 20 years to 40 years, you are about finding yourself, your passion, your strength to develop yourself. 40 to 60 you have to empower yourself. Financial independence is very important. Once after 60, if you're not financially financially independent, you will have trouble. So throughout your life, you must be prepared. You must be, you must be aware that you are an, an, uh, an organic being living a material world which is growing, expanding, and changing. And Deep inside, there is this spirituality in you. So human values must be there. So in your development as a human being, retirement, I think it's an archaic word used in the past, you know. Because for me, I, I enjoy myself talking to others. I enjoy myself writing, contributing uh, to others. The purpose of life, as uh, Dr. Amir said, and I agree with him that, Life is a learning journey. You made a mistake, you make a mess of yourself, even in a relationship, for instance. A lot of our, our women you know, in a South Foundation, they shared with me how miserable it was for them after the divorce. They still miss their husband, although they hated them like hell. <laughs> but you know, they re reminded of some fond moments. My husband in particular, he loved to sing, and, and we continue singing even until, until today. Yeah. And... And sometimes through singing, we make fun of each other and we try to reflect on ourselves. And being an organic yeah, at old age in particular, even when you're young, you need time to just reflect because emotions are neurotransmitters from the brain to tell you you are doing right or you are doing wrong. Translated into feelings, you must understand what they are. And if it's against you, anger, fear, anxiety, stress, you've got to reflect. You need to meditate. You need to find time to, to, to reflect. Prayers help. So in, mm. in that sense, the meaning of life you know, is very important for you. And our children must be trained early. I want to build on what Zainab uh, mentioned about that first 20 years, second 20 years. Um, my, my point is that Work is part and parcel of human nature. Yeah. You work from the time you're born mm. till the time that you the say person is on the deathbed. 
work is with us all the time. It's yes. a matter of the kind of work that we do, mm. which means that the energy level that we need also also is also different. You know, the first 20 years is basically work to learn and study. The next 20 years was to, is to work, to yeah. work, serve, mm. and be productive. The next, the third 20 years is basically to, also. to lead and manage. Mm. But we are at the stage now, the fourth stage of our existence. Mm. And this is work we work to empty ourselves, you know, to transfer what we have mm. to others, to others to benefit. And the energy level that we need for this is definitely not the same as when yes. we were younger. Yeah. And here I mean is that we need to we 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 we, we share, you know, we leave a legacy behind in terms yes. of knowledge. I mean it's a waste if we have so much knowledge and it goes down with you six feet under the ground, right? <clears throat> it has yes. so much wisdom and it goes with you when you yes. when you pass on. You have so much experience, so but uh, this is the time when we work. We will yeah. leave a legacy behind. And I think the energy level will not be that high because it's not physical work, you know, but it is through interaction <laughs> and exchanging yes. and, and communicating. So I think this is something which will occupy uh, the, 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 the retiree to be the unretired. Yeah. Yes. Wisdom. Uh, Suresh, Wisdom. Sorry, sorry, Suresh wanted to say something. Suresh, go ahead. Yeah, just, just uh, picking up. As we see how society is uh, evolving, uh, people are becoming fitter, they're becoming healthier, they're living longer. The government acknowledges this healthcare systems. The one concept I think society will now have to accept, and even organizations, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is that retirement is now a very fluid concept. It is no more a cliffhanger, you know. Some people, to summarize a little bit of what Amir said, they must be able and willing to work. We know people who are 55 years old who are washed out. And yet I know people who are 73, 74, who are pilot instructors, full of enthusiasm. And, you know, people wonder where they get the energy from. Yeah. So it's up to the individual's capability and his willingness you know, to pursue fruitfully uh, what he has uh, you know, develop his own professionalism in, and whether to pursue. He cannot be forced to continue his work. Now, in uh, I used to sit in what we call the Human Factors Committee of the International Federation of Pilots. Now, there's a lot of resistance, uh, especially in America, where pilots were forced to fly beyond the age of 55 because they had very attractive pension schemes, etc. They wanted to retire, you know, go and live play golf and go fishing and do things. But what happened, you know, when the financial crisis hit, a lot of the pension plans all blew up in their faces. They, they, they ended up with 25% if they were lucky. Now what, what happened? A lot of them also are not mentally prepared. That caused a lot of mental issues for quite a number of uh, those who are looking for a fruitful retirement. So these are some of the things that society has to grapple with, I guess, in many ways, you know, when we talk about retirement. So essentially introducing the concept of a fluid retirement age. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, as you've all pointed out, the concept of retirement is probably an archaic one. Uh, it will probably bear little relevance as we carry on. And as the next generation comes in and faces the situation of at which point do I say, I call it quits, right? Um, now, the thing is, meanwhile, while we are contributing, uh, do you see f factors like ageism uh, popping up and sort of interfering and making your journey a bit harder in this retirement stage? Now, uh, I have to go into a little bit of psychology here. First thing, WHO, they say that we, all of us, 60 plus, we are in the late middle age. That's how they define us now. No, okay. Yes, late middle age. Now, when I was retired, I was given a uh, letter, an email saying that your age is up and you have to leave. So how did I take that? I know I, I felt, uh, like I said, please forgive me, I have to go a little bit into psychology. Now about the life, left brain and the right brain. Okay. It is logical, it is creative. In fact, where are we 
the human being most creative at the age of 70. Why is he most creative at the age of 70? Now, before your retirement, you were doing a specific age. Take our uh, gentleman Suresh. He was flying, he was concentrating on whatever the uh, pilot does, but he didn't think of other things. So when retirement comes, that is where fluidity comes in. It's no more crystallized. You are as though you are born again. And is this a fact? Yes, it is a fact. The myelin increases in our head, in our brains. The neurons move faster because you're not only can concentrating on a particular subject, but in many things. Like mm. for myself, yes. I was lecturing, I was chairing the exam board. But then I was also a counselor for many years, 40 years. But today I'm developing companies. Yes, I still go back and teach, but I develop com uh, companies. Why? Because this is my opportunity, my opportunity to do what I feel I could have achieved if I had a chance earlier. Mm. You know, so it's a fact that the brain mm. does work better at 70. It's no more so, let me give you an example, just like our eyesight. As we grow older, our eyesight gets better. Why? Because the muscles tend to loosen and our lenses also loosen, so our eyesight gets better little bit same thing when your brain is so tight the left and the right as you age it becomes looser and there is much like what Suresh said fluidity not that much crystallized anymore so we can do things that we always desire to do and I think that's a good thing okay Suresh uh, you wanted to say something yeah I, I think ageism comes in when there's competition in the workplace mm -hmm. so like I just narrate my own personal experience. I'm coming back into the workforce, but I'm coming back at a lower capacity, but contributing. So I'm not interested in position of hierarchy or anything. I just want to do my work, come back home and contribute effectively to a younger group of people. Now, all my bosses, well, all my junior people, so I'm in no competition. I'm not fighting for anything. I just want to pursue my passion. That's all, period. Mm. So where does ageism come into this? Ageism comes in, in my opinion, when you start competing for the same jobs. I'm not competing. I don't want we, So I think we must, uh, I think all of us are on the same page when we say that, you know, we essentially we want to contribute, you know. We're not interested in positions of power or anything, you know, because it comes with too much of responsibility, too much of headache. Mm. So if... Uh, it depends on, and also it depends on the HR practices in uh, each organization, how you fit in. We don't interested in a top salary anymore. Just give us something decent and allow us to contribute. I agree. Ageism is just numbers. The young people, they want to rise, they feel competition. But I think more, more important than that is commitment, sense of purpose in life, and that you want to do it. So your mindset, must be in, in a manner that to push you, to drive you forward, then you will feel the satisfaction. Money is mm. no longer a factor, should no longer be a factor when you reach your 60s and above. You should be financially independent. And this is where I think the education system must nurture our children to be prepared what to expect as they grow up you know, so that at the point of time in between the 20s to 30s, 30s to 40s, they have to develop themselves to be prepared to be stronger so that when they reach 50s and above, they are well ahead. Mm. And that is how okay. we evolve. <clears throat> and for the third millennium today, as we can see the problems coming up from rising sea level and uh, all sorts of problems, COVID-19 and our young people not happy and all, at the same time, we, we know that people like Elon Musk, for instance, preparing people to take us into Mars. I made a quick research on this thing, and he said it will take you 17 months to travel to Mars from Earth, and you will need half a million US dollars to pay for the cost. When, my, when I was young, all people going to Mecca take nine, nine months by ship. My time is nine hours, but now we are talking about the universe. And I believe as, as, as 
I mean, faith in God helps me. And I believe our God is God of the universe. He will want us to explore Mars. In future, we will uh, explore okay. Mars. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's come back to Earth for a little bit <laughs> from Mars. And, uh, allow me, you wanted to say something. Yeah. Sorry, Zaida. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, age, ageism uh, certainly exists. It certainly exists. Yeah, political. Uh, ageism uh, certainly exists. Now, um, I believe that uh, we can mitigate that if uh, we, the retirees or the unretired, you know, uh, position ourselves as people who are not misfits, yeah. uh, not to be seen as people who are aliens or people from Mars or from Venus, but <laughs> part and parcel of the whole yeah, continu continuum yeah. again. You know, I, I see the mixing around with the younger generation, in, which I still do because I'm socially engaged. Uh, one thing that I find uh, missing a gap, uh, which I think people like us can fill in, which the youngsters appreciate is basically to connect the dots. You know, the past, present, and the future. They have the present, they can think about the future dot. Yes. But the past, the historical dot, you know, that dot <laughs> before all of them is missing. Mm -hmm. So when, when we come in and we say, look, we can help you connect the dot, you know, the past, like what happened, the historical part. Yes. I think uh, we are bringing something very, very, very valuable to the table. Because I always, for example, you know, um, if you are in an organization and you are working on a deal, but uh, there are some similarities to a certain case or certain uh, deal about 20 years ago, 30 years ago, how companies or how organizations conduct themselves or behave. People don't know, see, but you know, because you are from there. And yeah. you, it, you know, um, to the table, I think, wow, it's a wow effect. It's you know? true. Uh, people who are in our you know, our, the, 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 the retirees or the unretired, no? there'll be a one factor to them to say, yeah, you know, this is what we need and what we want. And we have people who are filling that gap for us. Thank you. Okay. All right. So Jasmine, I just wanted to ask you something uh, in relation to the work that you do and the people that you interact with. What sort of groups of people come for the guiding? Do you see a mix across generations? And is there interest in what you've got to say about the past? Uh, depends on the group. For example, because mainly I guide VIPs, I do so a lot of the foreign tourists I guide, they are actually, gen well, I've had one quite young lady, uh, but generally they're quite wealthy. So, you know, they, they're in their 50s or 60s, uh, some are in like second, third marriages. So uh, they, um, in a way, uh, it is it's quite shallow. In uh, like you know, like you just give whatever is, like like uh, more outstanding in Singapore. But uh, I do another bit, which is I actually uh, guide. Um, I, I do I guide educators. So I curate tours for educators, and in these these are the most fascinating tours because. Um, they, they actually are very interested. You know, they're, they're, when I do like sustainable architecture tours or when I do tours um, which relate, relate to lost cultures, uh, then you, you, you do see that, um, like, uh, like uh, one gentleman said, that what is our added value uh, when we are older, right? So the, the fact that we have memories, we have um, we have recollections and uh, the main problem I find with Singapore is that something that happened five years ago or ten years ago, people just forgot. You know, if the, the building physically is no longer there or even if it's physically there and it's changed a purpose, it's not there anymore. So um, I find that people do seek me out because it's also a matter of giving a depth, a depth to a story beyond the official narrative, beyond okay. what you can read. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Suresh, or was it Amir? Did you want to add something? 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I wanted to say something about uh, what Alami said. That the young, how they were, you know, he said, uh, uh, wow, it's a fact. I think it's a myth that when we say that the young are not interested to know about the past, I think it's really a myth. When you tell them about the past, because they re the young, the what is happening, the retired don't want, they feel that the young are hubris. They have this attitude where they are not bothered. Very arrogant. I don't think so. I agree with Alami there. They are. They want to know about the past so they can build on it. When we were thinking about the future, about the future of education, and somebody brought this up when we were having a meeting, somebody brought it up. Instead of looking at the future, why don't we look at the past? Have we really done what the past had wanted, the directions of education? And apparently it was found that we haven't. So let's revisit the past and build up again. That was what the young proposed. And I agree with him. That was the wow factor. Uh, Suresh, you wanted to say something? Okay. Uh, I just want to su uh, summarize in real terms what Jasmine, Alami, and Amir just said. As part of my re-engagement back into the company, I had to attend a five-day course for reactivation as an instructor. The guys in my class were half my age, literally half my age, you know. So it's only myself and another one of my batch mates. But what transpired during the five days, we couldn't resist but share some of the past experiences. Yes. Now, a lot, a lot of the people in the class kept on commenting how they found those, uh, that knowledge and that sharing of experience so beneficial for them. Why did we want to talk so much about it? Because, you know, we talk about mentoring. Mentoring is always from the from up to down, you know, the older person to the younger person. But here was a group of people who were so interested because they don't they don't want to make the mistakes, which in aviation is a very excuse me, it's a very expensive game. You know, you don't want you want to learn from other people's mistakes. You don't want to make these mistakes yourself. But strangely enough, uh, I find there's something called reverse mentoring. Reverse mentoring means hey, we can also learn from them. Now, in that same room, there was this digital whiteboard. And, you know, I was a native, you know, I had no idea what the real digital native, I didn't know what the hell, how to use this digital. So I, I asked them, you know, and we talked about it, they showed me. So it was a fantastic, uh, this one, as long as we don't come across as being threatening, don't talk down on them and come at a level where we want to share equally with them and be partners with them in moving forward. I think, you know, in that sense, uh, a lot of our people, I find they come down with this heavy-handed attitude, especially when you're the older you are, you know, this uh, laughing attitude, you know. Yeah, the voice of authority, right? Yes. Yeah. No, 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 okay. no. Especially yeah. with the younger generation, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Line up, sorry. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree completely with you. Uh, well, I like to just refer to the books that I wrote. There was... Uh, my life uh, journey from the past to the present, and I leave behind seven lessons from the past for the future. The, the future can never be like the past again. We have to understand the, the, the desire of our youth to achieve, to move on, and we have to give them a chance. They will be living in a in more integrated world of knowledge and experiences. We have to give them that chance, but we can t share with them what we have learned from the past so that they can move forward. And I believe Singapore will be doing better and better. We are already the third fin world's financial center next to New York and London. My son is in China. He's leading his, his bank over there for and uh, turning the bank into world's best for three years. And I believe our young people will be able to do so. And now, no more talking about Shang, uh, Shang, uh, Shanghai, the, the capital city. He's talking about Shenzhen. And he said, what's happening in China is beyond what we can expect. We have to respect and we have to give it to our young. The world of the future, just like our world today, we are supposed to be first world nation. It's nothing compared to the colonial 
time of the past divide and rule where people were fighting and uh like what you calling the chinese educated piranhas the <laughs> malay the, the, the english educated angel face when i gave birth to my son i said my son will never be a, any kambilis he can be a guppies eaten up by all no i i train him differently so i, I think the younger generation uh chang chusen uh spoke of school for life I, i i think that is a good idea we have to open up to be creative and give recognition to the fact that the future belongs to the young but we yeah. can help we can share with them what we have gone through and what are the lessons from the past because as uh dr amin said yeah we have the wisdom we understand what happened what went wrong and we have to be effective in our communication mm. to them we have to prepare them as to financial journey so that they can become strong and move on i uh, i'm confident of that okay um, so yeah. you you've worked with uh, the three prime ministers right you've uh, had dealings with has the notion of retirement uh, ever come up in any of the discussions and what were their thoughts on it if uh, there should be it was not in <laughs> my memory and it was not in my interest i was looking at <clears throat> well that was fantastic growth on the likwanyo i worked with him closely and he had a hope uh, of mandaki community organizations to lead the way but some of there's too much of emotions against each other against other races and now in a globalizing world when we our doors are open to strangers to people from other countries here and as uh, Lawrence Wong said we are the oh, listen Lu said we want the best brains here we'll be facing a lot of competition so okay. our young we have to help our young to move down mm. yeah Okay, we are well. We've overshot uh, our time, as I said we would, <laughs> most likely. But it's been a fantastic uh, discussion. There's a, a lot more we can talk about, and a lot deeper we can go into a lot of these things. And I guess we will set this up for future discussions. Uh, but just as a parting shot, if I could have from each of you uh, one point mm-hmm. you would like to share with your future self coming to retirement, or to the next generation coming to retirement. what would you advise them about this process of retirement or the point of retirement let's start with you amir i think the elderly should know what uh, just now i think was suresh or lami who said that our physical self is not like before i think we should be mm-hmm. aware of that we should be conscious of that now consciousness mm-hmm. is a lot of things it's also emotions sensations etc memories of your own body and knowing what you are I think that is very important. However, they should also realize that their minds are more creative. Mm. So that okay. will give them a chance to spread out. Okay. Uh, Alami? Um, I think um, people will have to realize that retirement is something which you have to plan for. It's something that you just don't walk into retirement, yeah. you know? Yes. And here I like to suggest that it's a 3M plan, 3M. Huh? And you have to look after this 3M very carefully. One is money health, M. First M is money health. Number two is mobility health, you know. And number three is mental health. Mm-hmm. And these are the three M's that we need to, uh, to, to, to look after, to nurture, to prepare ourselves so that when we reach our 60 plus and into our retirement and to our the fourth stage of our existence we number one will not be a burden yes to our families and burden to our community and society but uh, you know we continue to be of uh, good service a uh, low energy level it's okay but good service and people will uh, and they will appreciate you know uh, what you can give to them thank you okay great suresh how about yourself well i think uh, just taking off from the anecdote i mentioned earlier is that one must always be prepared for it well in advance develop plans for retirement okay and that should also as was mentioned look after your physical 
look after your mental health, and most importantly, think never in retirement look back. Always look forward to your next phase of life. You know, you do because you look back, you become miserable. So the choice is yours. You want to become miserable or you want to become happy. So make the most of your future life. Okay, great, uh, Zaina. I like to reverse what uh, uh, Alami said. He was saying about uh, money first, mobility next, and then your mental health. I think mental health is most important. Your mind must be set right. And then physically, you'll be healthy. Money will come in. You can plan uh, find your financial planning into the future very easily once you, you know that this is the way forward. And to the way forward is two ways. You have so many uh, ways, so many choices, but two ways, good or bad. Good for yourself or bad for yourself. To be good for yourself, inclusivity is important. And sustainability also is the way ahead. And uh, I think we should not be a burden to others. But more important, we should not be a burden or a victim of ourselves. It is be horrible if you just can't walk around and can enjoy life, can appreciate things that you love when you were younger. You must never be a victim of yourself. And to do that, you must understand yourself, as the others all said. All what uh, you all are saying are right. We are in the same same boat and we are moving uh, forward and we are leaving behind a legacy for our children. We care for our children. We love them. And it is in our nature as human beings. We have to be compassionate. So this is where mental health okay. is most important. Okay, great. Thanks, Zainab. Uh, Jasmine, any question advice? Is, uh, sorry, the advice question is, to uh, the uh, next generation of people right? retiring. Yeah. I'll say yeah. learn languages. Learn Take languages when your mind is flexible. <laughs> You're right. Learn yes. languages. Oh, that's that's a good good one to consider. Yeah. Well. Keep to your mind going as well. Effectively to communicate effectively. Yeah. With okay. All. Great. Uh, okay. So we've we've reached uh, the time well we exceeded the time but it's been a lovely chat i mean wonderful to hear all the views and the perspectives and i think the whole idea of i think we're all in agreement that retirement should be tossed out the window as a word as a as a concept and i think uh, with the way the world is going with the geek economy with the gig economy and so much of technology coming into play uh we may live longer we may be sharper we may be better we may be able to contribute more who knows what's coming up but uh, for now, we should all live. Uh, I think the rest of our lives should be one which should be lived and not suffered through. And I yeah. think that's one of the key things that we should take away from this session. Fantastic. Uh, Amir, uh, Alami, Suresh, Zainab, and Jasmine, thanks so much for being in this session. And uh, look forward to catching up with you all as well. Take care. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye-bye. Yeah.